how does one handicap the favorites coming in? How they've played over the last few weeks, the week before, or just they've never won it before and it's time in your estimation? I mean, how does one figure out who the favorite to win the Masters is, Scott? I, I think, Rich, it's the most difficult tournament of the year to, to handicap for exactly what you're the, the, the question that you're asking. Because let's say you're Rory McIlroy or you're Justin Rose and you've never won here. But you, if you're Rory, you've finished in the top ten the last five times you've played here. If you're Justin Rose, you've been runner-up twice in the last four years. I would say, having played well here, most uh, having played well here in the past is more important than having played well recently. But if you're Rory and you've played well here recently and you've won recently, then that puts you in a different category. And of the players in the top ten in the world, I believe nine have won this season. So. You've got that on your side, but then you've got a guy like Tiger who, okay, well, he hasn't won this year, but he's won here four times. So I think that what, what I'm getting to is that what, what, what we create is a lengthy list of players, most of whom are really decorated or highly rated, who you think, well, sure, he could win. I mean, I joked with Andy yesterday. We were on the air here for hours doing the press conferences, and I said, I think, Andy, you, you pretty much, you're like Vital in the tournament. I think you've predicted 12 people are going to win. And by rule, that there will be one green jacket on Sunday. So I find it incredibly difficult to, to narrow down the, the, the focus to just a couple, whereas there's at least a handful to 10 guys that you think, oh, absolutely, it, it, it could be his time. And then when you hear the phrase, uh, this is my favorite golf phrase, course is set up perfectly for this person, you know, and that's, that's kind of like the pound for pound in boxing. Um, right. You, know, you gotta, you gotta figure out what, what does that mean? So what does that mean for, for the masters? Who does this course set up well for? A, a long list because there, there, there are very <laughs> few people that it discounts is the issue. Like, I mean, Dustin Johnson hasn't played great here and he's now number two in the world, but you'd think he's got the game. He can hit it a mile, hits it a mile in the air can get streaky with the putter, but he likes to cut the ball, and it's, it's more right to left than it is left to right if you're right-handed. So that doesn't discount him. But like a player, again, Justin Rose says, this golf course just absolutely suits my eye. And you look at like the Texas Tech-Virginia game the other night. Either team could have won at the end. It would have felt like an appropriate outcome, like the right team won. Well, Rose could have easily won here two years ago, but he lost in a playoff to Sergio. So – uh, he's on that very, very short list of you know horse uh, uh, horses for courses when it comes to the Masters. Rose, I mean, rightfully will be uh, on the list of everyone that will say, oh, he he could slash should win eventually. But this course had a long list of those guys. Rich Norman was supposed to win. Weisskopf was supposed to win. Duvall was supposed to win. Right. Els was supposed to win. They never did. So. You, when your moment's here, man, you better grab it. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.